Space Shuttle Discovery blazed toward orbit on October 23, 2007, carrying a new pressurized module for the International Space Station and a crew of seven astronauts with an ambitious schedule. But the SGS-120 mission ended up being even more of a challenge and a triumph than NASA expected. On board were Commander Pam Melroy, Pilot George Zamka, and Mission Specialist Stephanie Wilson, Doug Wheelock, Scott Parazinski, Dan Tani, and Paolo Nespoli of the Italian Space Agency. Their main objectives were to deliver the Italian-built U.S. Node 2, known as Harmony, and relocate and unfurl a power-generating truss segment. The Discovery crew spent two days catching up with the station, and with Melroy at the controls, the two spacecraft were joined as they sped through orbit at 17,500 miles per hour. With NASA astronaut Peggy Whitson commanding the space station, this marked the first time both the shuttle and station were under the command of women. Hours after docking, Tani took over as station flight engineer, relieving Clayton Anderson. During the first of the mission's four spacewalks, Parazinski and Wheelock successfully installed the Harmony module in its temporary location on the station's Unity module. The module will act as a gateway for the European Space Agency's Columbus Laboratory module and Japan's Kibo Research module, both of which will be delivered to the space station on upcoming shuttle flights. Uh, we think the Harmony module is a very, Harmony is a very good name for this module because it represents the culmination of a lot of international partner work and will allow uh, additional international um, international partner modules to be added on. Harmony came to be, the name Harmony came to be from a contest of many different uh, schools around the country. Over 2,200 school ch children participated in this uh, contest and we wanted to acknowledge those schools. On the second spacewalk, Parazinski and Tani ventured out into space to disconnect cables from the P-6 truss. This allowed Wilson and Wheelock to operate the station's robotic arm to remove the truss with its set of large solar panels. Meanwhile, Tani discovered and collected some metal shavings during a visual inspection of the station's starboard solar alpha rotary joint. Known as SARGE, this joint allows the station's solar panels to rotate and track the sun. Two days later, Parazinski and Wheelock attached the P-6 truss segment to its permanent home on the far left side of the station. But when the P-6 solar arrays were 80% deployed, a rip appeared in one of the gleaming gold blankets, and the focus for the rest of the mission shifted to a daring repair of the torn solar array. Finally, on flight day 12, Parazinski embarked on a dangerous but critical fourth spacewalk. Wheelock watched closely and helped Parazinski avoid the dangers of electric shock by warning when he came too close to the array. Using wire and pieces of aluminum, Parazinski cut a frayed guide wire and repaired the array with homemade stabilizers. The successful repair restored structure and stability to the damaged array, allowing it to extend completely to its 110-foot length. In two, one, mark. We've got deployed the streets. Two deployed the streets. Yay! All right. Beautiful. Great news. Beautiful. What an accomplishment. Nice teamwork. Phenomenal. Excellent work, guys. Excellent. After nearly 11 days together, Discovery and the International Space Station parted ways on November 5th. Discovery returned home to NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida two days later, touching down on the first attempt after traveling more than 6.2 million miles. Houston Discovery will stop. Copy, will stop Discovery. Congratulations on a tremendous mission and a great landing, Pam. And we'll meet you on page 5-3 with no deltas.